Today, in chemical engineering, we're going to use material balances to solve unsteady state problems. So the example we're doing is example one from the unsteady state section. Um, we have a nice picture here just showing what's happening. So we have a 12 and a half cubic meter tank that's being filled with 0 0.05 meters cubed of water per second. When the tank has 1.2 cubic meters of water in it, so it's not completely full, it's, uh, you know, a tenth or so full, uh, leak starts to occur, and it's getting worse over time, and the, it's leaking at a rate of 0 0.0025 uh, times the time. So, where well, the time is in seconds, and the leak starts from what we're going to say is time zero. So we want to find the volume of the water in the tank as a function of time. So what we're going to do to do this is a total mass balance. We have uh, the accumulation of water in the tank is equal to be is going to be equal to whatever's coming in minus whatever's coming out plus whatever whatever's generated or, or cons minus the consumption. Since this is total mass, you can't generate or consume total mass, so those are both zero. Um, we know stuff about the volume in this case, but mass is equal to density times volume, so we'll use that as our staying for mass. So the accumulation of mass is equal to the change in mass, or the volume times the density, divided by the change in, in the change of time. So this is a derivative of mass with respect to time. That's going to be equal to the density of water times uh, the volumetric flow rate in of that water, minus the density of the water coming out, minus the uh, volumetric flow rate of that leak. We're using water the entire time, so we know uh, the density is constant with time. So we can actually bring this out of the derivative, um, and then it'll all cancel. So then we have our volume with respect to time is equal to whatever the volume is coming in, volumetric flow rate coming in, minus the volumetric flow rate coming out. Uh, we can plug in what we know about these two things. So we know that volumetric flow rate coming in is always 0 0.05 meters cubed, and it coming out, the leak is 0 0.0025 times um, the time. What we want to do is then separate our time variables from our volume variables, so that way we can integrate and solve this problem. We'll move those over. So we moved everything with time over to the right-hand side, everything with volume to the left-hand side, and we integrated from the initial condition, which was 1.2 meters cubed at a time of zero, to the condition that we want, which is any volume with respect to time and that time that it's respected to. So that, like I said, those were the initial conditions. If you do these integrations, you get the volume minus 1.2 is equal to 0 0.05 time minus 0 0.0025 times squared over 2. Um, just rearranging that and making it a little bit more simplistic and giving it for volume on one side and time on the other, uh, we get that the volume is going to be equal to 1.2 plus 0 0.05t minus 0.00125t squared. So t is in seconds and v is in meters cubed. But if we draw this solution, uh, we would get the volume initially goes up and then goes down into a negative re region after a certain amount of time, which is not really phys physically realizable. So what we did was just solved it where the volume is zero, which is about 57 seconds. And so we said that the volume is going to be equal to this equation from time of 0 to 57 seconds. I know that's cut off, um, but after 57 seconds, uh, there's going to be no more volume. The volume is going to be 0. Please visit my website at chemicalengineeringhq.com for more lectures, problems, and solutions. See the description down below for links to this problem and solution. Leave me a comment to let me know what you think about this video. Thanks.